Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this part of my Ryobi garage door series here. So, in the last video, um, I installed the Ryobi 2 horsepower uh, garage door opener. The only issue I was having is it's not working with the previous smart home accessory that I ha had hooked up to it. Um, what it was doing was it was trig triggering accessory port number one when I had it hooked in like I normally would have it hooked in. Um, so then I tried soldering it directly to the back of the push button on the garage wall control unit um, And that would actually open it for about a second, but then it would close it back again. Um, let me show you what I was using before So here is the controller that I was using before it's the Lumery smart garage door opener um, I had it hooked up here on my Ryobi garage door opener, but like I said it wasn't working so I've done a little research. Um, luckily, there are it's a, a smart things thread that I found, um, and a man named Jason has uh, broken the riddle and solved what we need to do. So I have acquired all the pieces, and we're going to build what we need to build, and hopefully get this up and running with our smart home automation. So stay tuned and join me because I know some of you out there probably want to do this too, and this can help solve a lot of your troubles. So here we go, let's get started. Alright, so we're back in my office here. Let me show you guys what parts you're going to need to make this work. Okay, so first thing I had to buy was the Samsung Samsung Smart Things Hub. Um, like I said, my previous home automation was working off of an Alexa Echo. Uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it, it had its own hub built in. So I had to get the Smart Things Hub. I also had to get the Go Control uh, Garage Door um, Smart Controller. I guess that's the piece that sends the correct signal to actually open this. Um, I had to also buy this Bosch 5-pin relay. Um, here's the information on it. If you can see that, but it's a 5-pin relay. That's what we needed, and you need a spare Ryobi um, car garage remote. So these are the items that you need. and. I'm going to go ahead and put the link up uh, right here or somewhere on here if I can figure it out. That's the link that actually has the thread that I found that shows you how to build everything together. Um, so at this point, we'll just go ahead and start soldering per the um, documentation that I found. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this. So the first part that we have to do is open up the controller here the, that goes in your car. It did have these little um, gray tabs on it. Um, I'm just going to shave those off and to gain access because uh, it seems to be impeding my taking the circuit board out without breaking it. So I'm going to shave those off and uh, pull that part out. Okay, so I've gained access to the circuit board in here. There's the back. There's the front. So let me show you here. Um, S1 is the first garage door button uh, labeled number one and number two is S2 right there. So I'm going to be soldering onto S1 to that point right there and to that point right there. Um, so that is going to be our first step to solder some wires to there. So we have our two soldered to the board. Now we have to solder to pins 85, which is this one right here, and 87, which is the top one right there. So that's what we're going to do now. Here we go guys, we have everything put together, uh, soldered to the controller, 
everything going to the relay and the power supply. Um, like in the diagram, I have my little project box right here, so I'm going to mount everything inside that project box. And then we will go install this um, at, at where the garage door is. Um, so that's my next step. I'm just going to put everything in this project box, and uh, we'll take this outside and get everything mounted. So here's everything mounted in our project box, ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to put it somewhere up there. And we should be good to go after that. There's the garage door opener. And I brought this out here to show you. Uh, Alexa, open garage. Warning, the garage is opening. Okay, so as you see it's working. Um, there's a few things that I had to do to get this to work. Number one, I had to buy a Smart Things hub because I didn't have one of those before. I ran everything off of my Echo Plus unit. Um, so the, the Samsung's, the Smart Things hub is basically a Z-Wave hub. Um, then I had to get the Go Control, or you can also use the linear um, Smart Garage Door opener. Um, and there's two pieces to that. There's the uh, tilt sensor that you actually put on your garage. Here, let me show you. There's the tilt sensor right there. And then there's the actual unit that I mounted up there in the black and white. So uh, you need those two things. And basically I linked that in the Smart Things hub. Um, uh, so after I did that, then I was able, I use what's called sharp tools because Alexa won't actually let you open and close locks and garages because uh, it, it sees it as a garage. Um, so we, what I had to do was link it in smart, uh, an app called sharp tools. Um, and I create a, created a virtual switch in smart things. And then on sharp tools, I used that virtual switch. I created a rule and made that switch, uh, depending on whatever state it got changed to on or off, I made that relate to um, the garage opening or closing with the Go Control um, smart do uh, device that I have up there. So, uh, and it also sends me a text message whenever it opens or closes saying garage open or garage close. Um, but that's, that's how I got it to work. Um, I'm going to leave a link here on, um, underneath with the site where I have everything, where I've found everything, um, with the diagrams and everything. Uh, I might actually put one, put it in the video too here real quick. Um, but I'll leave all those links in there. Um, I basically had to build the, um, I had to use the back of the, you know, salvage a garage remote that you would use in your car um, to do the whole build thing. But I have that piece already here in the video, uh, so you can see that. So actually, up on top of the garage door opener, it's the little box with the remote in there with the re the relay uh, that hooks into the Go Control unit. Um, so that's that's how you can make it work, and it's uh, actually pretty cool. The sharp tools. Um, you can go online and um, to sharptools.io and actually make a little dashboard with it and control everything from your computer too. So um, I think I'm going to start converting things over to Sharp Tools because I, I see the power of it now. Uh, whereas before I wasn't using anything like that, but now I see the power of it and there's a lot more you can do with it. Um, so that's pretty much how I made it work. So uh, I guess if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll answer what I can to try to help you if you're in a similar situation like me. Like I said, I'll leave all the links and everything down there. Um, but hopefully you can get yours uh, working with your smart home too uh, and not have any issues. I will say with the Go Control, the important thing was um, pretty much getting it synced exactly how it says uh, to do it. Uh, I first brought it close to the Z-Wave unit and um, paired it with that. And then I brought the whole thing, everything out to the garage um, and put the tilt sensor up and then um, did the rest. 
Uh, but you have to follow those steps pretty precisely because I wasn't following them at first and I couldn't get it to work. And I think that might have been why because I wasn't you know, following those steps precisely. Okay, so here let me show you guys sharp tools. This is how uh, what I use to actually int actually integrate everything into Alexa to make it work. Uh, so it actually allows you to create a dashboard. Um, here's a, a few things I have imported into the dashboard right now. Here is the garage door switch that I imported from Smart Things that I created a virtual switch. This is it right there. That's the garage door smart opener. Um, so what I did was I created a, a rule that whenever the state of this changes to on or off, it's going to actually um, trigger the smart garage door opener. So if you see the rule engine here, I have my Alexa garage open and Alexa close and then a regular one. But for instance, if we look at the Alexa garage open, so what it does when that garage door switch right here, uh, it triggers it when the state of it changes to on then it'll execute a command to open this on the smart garage door opener. There's also another action here that sends a, a SMS notification to my phone. Um, so that's how those work. Like you can see here on the garage, Alexa garage close, it has the switch here that when the state of that virtual switch changes to off, then it executes the command there to close the garage. And I also get a text message on that one as well. Um, so this is what you use, sharptools.io, and you can create a free account. Um, it's free to set all these up. Um, but like I said, you would just import everything into Sharp Tools from the Smart Things environment, um, and then you would basically create your rules that would link that virtual switch that you created to your smart garage device. And that's how I got it to work. And then one last thing, <clears throat> the last thing I did was create a routines on Alexa um, that basically, uh, one specifically for the open, and uh, open command and then one specifically for the close command where, you know, you can say a specific phrase um, such as, you know, open garage or close garage and then uh, it links that to the, the switch basically. Um, in the in the routine so that's pretty much the last part of it that you have to do to in Alexa to get everything um, linked up but yeah you know, like I said if you have any questions just put them in the comments and uh, you know I'll answer what I can